How the mighty have fallen. What's going on YouTube and welcome to Goal Line Hockey. It's Kevin Forte and today we're taking a look at the Tampa Bay Lightning. One of the big three that have been knocked out in the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Tampa Bay Lightning after another impressive season. 46 wins, 98 points. Um, making the playoffs. They were really good most, most of the season. But there was some doubt creeping into this team toward the end of the season was this finally the year that the Tampa Bay Lightning would kind of get tired and things would catch up to them you know going to the Stanley Cup final three straight seasons is a grind that is really difficult to do the Tampa Bay Lightning found a way to do it and there was some skepticism this year could they finally fall and this is the year they finally fell you know there was a lot of uh, precursor to this, especially down the stretch, you know, the Lightning kind of looked dis, disinspired, not inspired, uninspired, and just overall just a lack of just urgency. And I think we started to see that against a team like Toronto that had everything to lose, ultimately really playing a factor in this series. Now, Overall, the season really was, it was impressive for Tampa, but it wasn't all, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for this team. You know, you look during the regular season, 113 points for Nikita Kucherov, one of the most silent 50 goal seasons from Braden Point, who had 95 points on the year. You know, Tampa played really well this season, but you're still looking at this team today and you're saying to yourself, you know, this team was probably capable of more. Now, you look at in between the pipes in the postseason. During the regular season, Vasily's save percentage was a 915, which you would expect from Vasilevsky. Come playoff time, it was sub 900. It was an 875 save percentage through the six playoff games. So he was not at his best at all. And kudos to the, light, uh, kudos to the Leafs uh, for basically scoring three and a half goals per game in a six game series against Vasilevsky. That is not easy to do. Not many teams will be able to do that. They were able to do it here in this playoff run. Now, what's also interesting about the, the Lightning is, you know, I just talked about the Avalanche and maybe the lack of depth kind of catching up to them. And I think that was part of the issue for the Lightning as well. You, know, you looked at especially when Hedman was out for a couple of games in this series, right? He was out for what, one or two games? early on that really hurt uh, losing headman really made a difference for this team they don't have the defensive depth that they had also you add in the fact that Chernak got hurt we didn't see Chernak um, after game one that was a big blow to their blue line so now you're talking about a not 1000 percent victor headman and no eric Chernak. that really put a damper on the tampa bay lightning you also you know you look at a guy like tanner you know who had four points in 20 games with the Lightning. So maybe he wasn't the big addition they were hoping that he could be. Um, you know, overall, this team just didn't have the depth. And it kind of shows with how they played. You know, I, you know, Isamont, Radish, um, Perbix, those guys just, they played okay. But they didn't play well enough for the Lightning to get past the Leafs. And... You know, it, what makes things interesting is you look into the summer at what they have, you know, kind of looking at cap friendly. Um, Kalorn is a UFA. I do not think Kalorn will be playing for Tampa next season. I really don't. And, um, you know, I know he's a fan favorite down there, but you could tell the game, he's definitely slowed down and the game has caught up to him. Um, I think we are going to see the end of Kalorn in Tampa. Uh, Ross Colton's coming off of an RFA deal as in, with arbitration. So they, I think they'll try to re-sign Colton. I think Belmar, Perry, and Michael Isamont, I think all three of those guys probably go out the door. Um, and I think they try to find a way to keep Janelle on a one or two year prove it deal. So, you know, kind of looking at it, I think we're going to see Colton and Janelle come back. Uh, Isamont, Maroon, Perry, and Kalorn. I think they all see the door this offseason in Tampa. Um, on the blue line... Uh, Ian Cole, I think they're going to just let him go, try to find somebody else, whether a trade or free agency. It's going to be tough in free agency, but you kind of look down that route, um, you know, because you already extended a couple of guys. You already extended Nick Pervix. You already extended Chernak and Sergachev. So that's kind of your core right now is Sergachev, 
Hedman, and uh, Chernak. Those top three, that's your group moving forward. Um, Darren Radish, Hayden Fleury, all, uh, also got extensions, so they're here for another season. You know, Tampa's got to add to that blue line because I really am not a fan of Fleury or Radish. Um, even Nick Perbix to an extent. I know he's still young, uh, but I think Tampa needs another guy kind of similar to Ian Cole, but is capable of more and more of a puck-moving defenseman. Um, they've already got Bogosian. They've already got Charanak. They've got those tough guys on the blue line. You need to get a little bit more skill and speed on that back end to help out quarterbacking this team alongside a guy like Hedman or Sergachev. And I think that's something where this team is lacking a little bit is on the blue line. Up front, they definitely have their issues in the bottom six. Need to get a little bit younger. I like Perry. I like Maroon. But those guys are old, right? And I think Perry and Belmar will likely see the door. Uh, you just need to add some new, younger blood to this team, just depth-wise. And, you know, the thing for the Lightning is there is a little bit of hope. You look at the system. Um, there are a couple of younger guys that could come up. I, I know they really like Jack Finley. He's probably their top prospect. Um, Alex Barre Boulay has kind of been bouncing around this franchise. He's a former first or second round pick. Um, I know they, there's still something there for Gabriel Fortier. Um, I think there's still an idea that he could be an NHL player. So really, specifically Jack Finley and Gabriel Fortier, um, those guys will likely get more time in the NHL next season. Uh, on the blue line, not really a lot there. I will be honest, maybe Roman Schmidt. Um, but other than that, I don't think anybody's really going to even be competing for a spot there. Um, you know, Philip Myers is there for another season, so maybe they find a way to get him back on the roster. But, you know, the way I look at Tampa right now is this is a very good team. They've got the poise. They've got the swagger. They've got the coach. They've got the goalie. They've got the guys that can score. Sergachev, Point. Stamkos, right? But you're starting to see the chinks in the armor. Vasilevsky, I think, just had a bad playoff run. We haven't seen this from Vasi in a very long time. 2019. And then you look at Hedman. Hedman is one that I'm really concerned about because he is more of, and it's nothing to his fault, I think, but his injuries are starting to pile up. Um, Victor Hedman at 32 years old, we're starting to see maybe some, you know, maybe just the the amount of hockey he's played just really starting to catch up to him. You know, he played in 76 games. He only missed six games this season. But you're kind of wondering, he's going to be hitting 1,000 games next year in Tampa, getting that silver stick. This is a guy that's played a lot of hockey. He's got a lot of mileage. And I just wonder if we're looking at a point here with Hedman that, you know, by the time that deal ends in 2025, are we maybe talking about maybe one more really good season with Hedman, and that probably being next season? That's going to be a real shocker because now, once a guy like Hedman potentially starts declining, now you're looking at this thing really being on the back of guys like Sergachev and Chernak, and that's where you really need that next defenseman to come up. Whether that ends up being Nick Pervix or Darren Radish, I don't think that's going to happen. You need to bring somebody in. I really think they need to get somebody in there. It's going to be difficult. You know, it's easier said than done. You look at their cap situation. Um, you know, they're, they're going to have $2.5 million this summer to work with. $2.5 million to re-sign Tanner Janot, Ross Colton, and try and bring in another backup goalie or bring in another defenseman. So there is not much available. So Tampa's going to have to do a little bit of work here. You know, I hate to say it, but I do look at a guy like Nick Paul. I know they just gave him that extension, but I do look at a guy like Nick Paul. Do they maybe move him out? Do they even move Nick Pervix out? You know, that might be a hot take. I'm not sure what Tampa fans think of Nick Pervix, but do you consider moving out a guy like that? I mean, it's kind of minuscule. It's, what, $1.5 million on his deal. But, you know, I really think that a guy like Nick Paul could be on his way out to alleviate that cap space. He does have a no-trade clause, which would make it difficult. 
But who else on this team do you move? You're not trading Kucherov. You're not trading Point. You're not trading Stamkos. You're not trading Sorelli. His extension kicks in. So wh where is the cap alleviation here? There really isn't one. Now that's either going to be a spot where now Tampa has to get creative and find a way to kind of maneuver their cap situation, or they're going to have to make trades and you know kind of move out that cap space on their own accord. So how I look at the Lightning, I think their offense for the most part maybe get a little bit younger, right? Moving out guys like Belmar or Perry for maybe some younger blood in Jack Finley or Fortier. On the back end is where I'm a little more concerned. I think that's a little bit more, oh, we need to make some real changes there. Um, and like I said, with the cap situation, it's going to be difficult for the Lightning. But I think that a lot of guys want to play in Tampa still, despite what happened this year. Guys that are chasing a cup, maybe in you know their mid-30s, you know, maybe hopefully earlier 30s, they could get a defenseman to kind of help out. Um, you know, I look at a guy, I don't know what his situation is, but I look at a guy like Shane Goss to spare. I think he would be a really good fit down there in Tampa. Um, you know, there's a couple of different defensemen that'll be available, but I think that the Lightning have to do their due diligence here. Find a cheap defenseman that can really help out, add some points, add some production on the back end without being too much of a defensive liability. And maybe Goss to spare isn't great in that regard, but... I think they need a guy that's got a little bit just better depth on the blue line. I think that's critical. You know, overall, I think a lot of this team is going to stay the same because I think Vasilevsky just had a bad playoff run and you know, it happens. It is what it is. You know, it's you know, you hate to say that it's like a cliche, it is what it is, but I think in this situation Tampa shouldn't be freaking out. They played a really good Leafs team that's definitely destined for a strong playoff run. Um, like I said, add a defenseman, get a little younger organically from your system with guys like Finley and Fortier up front. And I think the Tampa, Light the Tampa Bay Lightning will be back in this position next season. Maybe it's better, right? Like, is it better that they lose in the first round this year and have all this time off? Or is it better that they go to the cup final again this year? And if they lose in the cup final, now you're once again in that spot where two years in a row, you went all the way to the final but got a really short off season without a cup ring, maybe it's better off for the Lightning that they have this season to kind of regroup. And, you know, this kind of looks like, what was it, the, the 2018 or the 2017 Lightning where they shockingly missed the playoffs and kind of went on those runs after that. So maybe the long off season is the best thing for them. Let me know what you guys think down below. You know, is the sky falling for the Tampa Bay Lightning or do you think it's a little bit less... Uh, a little bit less scary than that. I'm a lot more optimistic. I think this team still has a window of another year or two. Honestly, with Victor Hedman. This is the Victor Hedman show. Um, you know, Stamkos' deal ends in 2024. You know, I think you've got one more really good run left in Tampa. I think, you know, with Hedman two years left on his deal, um, I think he's got one more really good year left in the tank and that being next season. Stamkos literally has one year left on his deal, so I think Tampa's got one more legitimate shot here um, with this current core to make something happen. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.